well as uh, symposia. All right. Now, as we are organizing further or more support, support for the APC presidential candidate, Chiwajibola Tinumbu, the APC professionals from taking the campaign a step further. They say by organizing a symposium on specific thematic areas on the manifesto, and it's tackled Renewed Hope 2023 Action Plan for a Better Nigeria. Well, clearly, the first edition of the uh, symposium uh, dissected uh, Tinubu's economic blueprint for national prosperity. Now, the Tinubu Infrastructural Roadmap for Nigeria's Development, the Tinubu Judicial and Law Reform for Nigeria and the Tunubu Panacea uh, for uh, a safe and uh, secure Nigeria. Now, uh, to consolidate that earlier program, the second edition of the symposium is scheduled to hold this Wednesday uh, on some key sectors of the economy. Well, uh, these uh, include the Ashiwaju Roadmap for Agriculture and Food Security, Action Plan for Women and Youth Empowerment, as well as a policy framework for power and energy sector. And as that firm continues to engage experts to dissect the Asiwajo 2023 project manifesto, what is the feedback from the electorate and how is the message being trickled down to you know those at the grassroots? Now, what are the languages of communicating these policies contained in the manifesto? For instance, what makes renewed hope 2023 action plan for a better Nigeria unique. So it's good morning Nigeria. Welcome to today's edition of the program. It's Tuesday's edition and I welcome you. I am Claire Adilabu Abdul Razak and um, I warmly welcome back on set Kingsley or Sadala who has been on a well deserved holiday. Kingsley, good to see you. Yeah, same here. You're looking <laughs> 10 years younger. <laughs> That, well, thank you very much. I mean, I uh, had uh, some uh, rest uh, over the past uh, weeks during the holiday season. And uh, it's good, of course, uh, to take a break uh, from the regular schedule. And I say to all our viewers around the country and elsewhere in the world, uh, Happy New Year. And thanks a lot for the goodwill <laughs> messages uh, that came over the course of Christmas and the New Year celebrations. So back to the grind, I'm Kingsley Osadola. I thank you for tuning in to Good Morning Nigeria today live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. As always, in the course of the program, we have our complimentary segments. And this will include newspaper review and business. For now, highlights of the morning news with uh, Frama Panye. Good morning, Frama. Good morning, Kingsley. Good morning, Claire. Happy New Year, Kingsley. We're happy to have you back. Same here. <laughs> President Muhammadu Buhari is in the Islamic Republic of Mauritania ahead of the third forum of the African Conference for Peace. The president was received at Noak Chot International Airport by a high-powered Mauritanian government delegation led by Prime Minister Mohamed Bilal. During the conference, President Buhari will receive African Peace Award for his leadership role in promoting peace on the continent through regular interventions, counsel and conciliatory position. To nations, to corporations, to any organization, peace is very important. Therefore, the peace award that is being given to our president is worth his weight in gold because this is a man that has spent his entire life fighting for peace so to speak he fought for the war of unity for the country after that he intervened in the political affairs of the country just to restore cohesion and then he contested for two terms and became president federal government is communicating with the National Economic Council to come up with modalities on how to achieve 0.5% of the nation's GDP for research and development in order to fast track to meaningful development. President Mohamed Buhari, in a message to his chief of staff, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, stated this at the opening ceremony of 2023 Science, Technology and Innovation Expo holding in Abuja. All researchers inventors and innovators participation in the techno export today to be resolute as we have confidence that your r d outputs will make nigeria a truly great nation 
respected all over the world for its exploits in science, technology, and innovation sector. Legislative interventions to improve national security, grow the economy, and enhance good governance are some areas of priority for the National Assembly as the Senate and House of Representatives resume plenary in 2023. There are bills that are of national importance. One of the most prominent bills is the Electoral Offices Commission Bill which primarily seeks to cough the avalanche of electoral offenses is of paramount importance in order to stabilize our democracy, to be cute and enduring democracy that can stand the test of time. And the federal government has ordered the closure of the second Niger Bridge and sections of other major roads which had earlier opened to ease traffic for 2022 Christmas celebrations. The directive was given by the Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Raji Fashola, to enable contractors return to site for the completion of the project. After 15th of January, we go back to work fully and after the final commissioning, the bridge will be open to all kinds of vehicles. The bridge itself is about 98%, but we need to construct access route. And the federal government says parents and guardians of school-aged children who are out of school will be arrested and prosecuted in a bid to reduce the number of out-of-school children in the country. The Minister of State for Education, Goodluck Nana Opia, stated this while flagging off national campaign on out-of-school children Abiyakuta Ogun State. Therefore, urge our stakeholders to work together to ensure that all our children, especially the indigent ones within our communities, are given support and sponsored into various vocations. And that's the news for now. Good morning, Nigeria continues with Claire and Kingsley after this break. Our country want better. Our country want better. Go do one for us. Mama talk and move. Mama talk and move for a better Nigeria. Good life, because now you we want to. Now you we need oh. So people of Nigeria, they jolly for the better. They want share for we country so ready to put Ashiwa Jubola Tinubu as the next president of Nigeria. Our people don't look the matter well. Say na only for Latinubu. Don't do what it everybody fit see. Now him get the experience. Where he go fit you stick make our country better. Make life sweet for we and our picking them. But Latinubu don't get a better plan to chase down war for we youth. Better school. The security of lives and property. Unity and peace for all we country people. People of Nigeria. But these and many other better things where in don't vocalize. He good make we all vote as you want to for Latinubu for president of Nigeria. Vote Tashim Shetima as vice president. Vote APC. The party where she broom. broom. Now you need to due process. We created the EFCC and ICPC. We brought Nigeria out of debt, achieving $18 billion worth of relief and $30 billion overall reduction. 
We revived the rail system. We upgraded agriculture. We brought in the mobile phone and digitalized Nigeria. Under the PDP, the Nigerian economy was the strongest in Africa. Though Nigerians made their choice, today we all know better. Hmm. Nigerians do not despair. Hope is at the horizon. We are putting in the work in refreshing our drive to rescue and rebuild Nigeria. Let's make it happen. PDP. Power to the people. What is happening? Your eyes are red. You are armed with a machete and a gun. See, I am angry and I can't even contain it. See. Oh my guy, calm down. See, calm I down. See, 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 I have planned to go and destroy this fool's business in the city. I have to return him over the dollar at our place. They cannot eat their cake and have it now, never. If you destroy their business here, and they destroy that of those close to you over there, especially that your brother who sends you steady cash, how would you survive? Would your dreams be on hold? See, what you're saying is correct. But I'm still angry. The best way is to embrace peace. With peace and unity. My people, our let us embrace happen. peace and unity. Let's learn to live as brothers and sisters. For a progressive, prosperous nation. This message is brought to you from the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. The Council of Our Fathers. My advice to these young people is please do not take us back to those harrowing days. You probably do not know what it is. Nigerian youth, let's build our nation together. All right, it's good morning, Nigeria. Welcome to the program. If you've just joined in, and um, time for us to catch up with business trends. Nigeria's headline inflation is easing gradually this time by 0.13% and coming down to 21.3% in December 2022 from 21.47% that was recorded in November. Let's get all the details from Comfort Amodo. Nigeria's headline inflation rate has dropped marginally to 21.34% in December 2022 from 21.47% recorded. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics shows a decline of 0.13% when compared to November 2022 inflation rate. However, on a year-on-year -year basis, the headline inflation rate was 5.72% points higher compared to the rates recorded in December 2021, which was 15.63%. On month-on-month -month basis, the percentage change in all items indexed in December 2022 in December 2022 was 1.71%, 1 which was 0.32% higher than the rate recorded in November 2022. The increases were recorded in all divisions that yielded the headline index, especially in food and non-alcoholic beverages, transport and miscellaneous goods and services. The inflation rate has been attributed to the sharp increase in demand usually experienced during the festive season, increase in the cost of production, increase in energy and transportation cost, and the exchange rate depreciation, 1% as the key market indicators advanced by 163.66 basis points amid positive market breath. Overnight rate ended flat at 10.00%. BDC depreciated to 747 Naira. <laughs> Good business news, comfort, and modu. Many thanks, comfort, for the business news package. Coming up next is New Super Review.
All right. Always a pleasure to have with us a uh, newspaper reviewer, Chukudi Okule Ubwaja. Yeah, yeah. It's, all, it's also, also a happy thing to be here every morning. Uh, I'm actually hoping that it extends into the weekend. I learned something <laughs> from you just, just a few, few minutes ago. What did you ago. learn? Um, someone is a... Is a site for oh, sorrow. Claire, uh, <laughs> save me the burden of that. I said Kingsley is, is a it, site for sorrow. Is a eyes. site for sorrow. That means it's someone you want to see every time. I had to drop that idiom to show <laughs> my, uh, my my sheer delight of seeing him again. Yes. Yeah. Welcome back, Kingsley. Thank you very much. Look okay. at his <laughs> guys. Follow me. Oh my God! Why is why is the guys not looking? Look at me. Look at the shave. <laughs> Madam is going to query you. Guys, uh, follow well, me. Well, Madam, Madam, I'm sorry before I left home. I'm so. sure she did. Yeah, you don't have a comment for the guests from me. There, 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 are, there, are, are, no there are no there are no queries. <laughs> Kingsley, welcome back. Yeah, thank you very welcome. much. Uh, Chico, but, nice. but I just before yeah, we go, yeah. I, I, Kingsley, I wanted you to share. How do you actually relax? Someone like you, I, I, I'm wondering if, if you will find that, you know, how do you relax? Maybe we'll have a personality interview for that. <laughs> <laughs> I should do. I'll take your phone. 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 I'll take uh, Jonathan warns politicians against hate campaigns. Liquidity crunch threatens federal government six million mass military deployment. Military kills two wanted terrorist commanders and forty others in Niger. And then the lead story: it's on politics. Is Atiku and Tinubu renew war over alleged corruption? Ashiwaju asks EFCC to probe and arrest ex vice president. You are distracting Nigerians from core issues, Atiku replies. Obi at Chatham High Children Regulatory Commission. Stop brain drain now, medical directors tell federal government. Bolanle Rahim, that's the lawyer who was killed on Christmas Day in Lagos. Accused officer, Van Day, pleads not guilty. The trial started yesterday. Clear. Mm. Okay, so let me take off from Van Day. Uh, and you see the picture series on the front page of the punch. It says DPO warned us as before Van Dyke lawyer. Uh, that's according to the inspector. Uh, details of that on page four. Um, okay, I'm told the uh, punch is not well. Let me just quickly read out the uh, headline story. MFLA DSS running battle post uh, CBN governor resumes. Page two. Uh, it comes with three riders. Confusion as uh, Secret Service debunks claims of arrest. Governor vows to work under president di president's direction. And MFLA will chair next MPC meeting. Spokesperson. Uh, there are quite a number of uh, stories on the front page of the point. Let me bring you the blueprint. I hope we, ha we can see the front page of the blueprint on the screen. Uh, the blueprint is leading again. With 39 days to presidential polls, Tinubu Atiku fight dirty over alleged SPV's scandal. And there are writers, Kiamo writes, CFCC, APC calls for ex VP's arrest, prosecution, six withdrawal from race. Now, call employ, call employ to divert attention from Tinubu's atrocities. At least you can read on page 6 and page 16. Now, MFLA resumes. The SSA says we didn't invade CBN. It's trending on the uh, left column. Again, INEC facility attacked in Enugu. Policeman killed. Rights Group Art Tax Commission on PVC's distribution. Page 23, page 22, 2023, 25 million Nigerians risk food insecurity, FAO, and uh, anti labor. Lupin threatens LMA petrochemicals shut down. Let's quick, quickly look at the trending stories at the foot of the paper. Uh, Kogi gov government rejects monarch's response to query over official title. 23 shiploads of petroleum products, others arrive Lagos soon. Uh, NPA and NAF strikes kill wanted terrorist commanders 
and 40 others in Niger. Bolandi Defense Council delays trial as Randy pleads not guilty. Non Gremitan says Amcon's uh, charges nine commercial banks 147.65 billion naira. And uh, the, there's a picture story there, of course, there's the picture <coughs> story of um, the Tinimbu PCC team uh, press conference that held in Apuja yesterday. Uh, okay, I think this are uh, the trending stories from Blueprint. Chukudu Kuli Yes, I I am focusing on two stories that uh, suggest a hide and seek between security agencies and some agencies. Emefile, DSS running battle paused as CBN governor resumes duty. Confusion as a secret service debunks claims of arrest. The governor, that's Emefile now, vows to work under president's direction. Emefile will chair MPC, that's Monetary Policy Council meeting, says his spokesman. The questions for me are, what is all the fury about the CBN governor and the DSS about? If there is sub substance in the allegations being bandied about, why don't we see this com these coming to the, this come into the open? The courts are the final arbiter. Why don't we stick to them as a process? Or, you know, bring up any iota of evidence <clears throat> that you need to carry out something that people are going to see as concrete. I see all this as, um, uh, since you like um, idioms uh, this morning, as a red herring on the trail. Something being dropped uh, to remove attention from, uh, fr fr from issues. You know, I don't know why this goes on and on. I, we, we, have, we should have time for more important things. It's my opinion. Now, just closely related to that, that the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund, that's NSITF, is daring ICPC and EFCC to probe, probe them. These things don't mean a lot to me. If you have anything concerning, uh, you know, graft, suspected graft, uh, by any agency, what you do is to engage a court process if you have gathered enough evidence. Why do we get treated to headlines that are to me outlandish, neither mm. here nor there? That is the question I am asking. You know, mm. I don't know whether uh, you're throwing up anything from your end concerning these two issues I raised. Kinsley? I thought I should uh, listen to uh, both of you before I speak. I, I was just wondering, uh, the issue of the uh, central bank governor, the story being treated as though he were a fugitive uh, at some point uh, when he was uh, on leave. Some said he was in the U.S. and now he resumed yesterday. There are all kinds of reports uh, saying that uh, there was a siege to the CBN headquarters, which the DSS has denied, denied. As, uh, as, as fake news. Well, one point to note, the central bank governor has no immunity from arrest and prosecution for any alleged criminal offense. Those who have immunity are identified in section 308 of the constitution. President, vice president, 36 state governors and uh, their deputies. Not even uh, members of the cabinet uh, have that immunity. So if uh, the authorities have any evidence, prima facie evidence of uh, alleged wrongdoing that will warrant uh, a person being taken into custody, they will of course proceed uh, to do that. Earlier you were talking about uh, having snippets of the allegations out there in the public domain some persons who say this would lead to media trial, as it were. That's the report of alleged financing of terrorism and, and all kinds of things. Those, those are the basic points to make. We must also remember, and this is critical, the governor of the central bank is not just another person. The governor of the central bank is a very well-known figure. And... At any point in time, if you desire to take him in for questioning, you can always get him. 
easily accessible. It's, you can always reach him. So what is all the drama all about? Fury. And then you also ask yourself this question. Because sometimes when we operate in silos, we don't uh, consider the ripple effect of what we are doing. Oh, sure. The central bank of any country is the manager of the monetary policy of that country. And the central bank of any country has linkages with other regional central banks, continental central banks, as well as international, that is to say global central banks. They have different fora at which they are operating. And if your own central bank is in linkage with these other central banks on the policy measure or some other thing that will assist your own economy, and now they are reading all of these accounts because the head of your central bank is being chased around or let's say some cat and mouse game is going on. Yes, Those are that central banks will say, hey, wait a minute, we can't deal with this now because we don't know what's going to happen. Yes, sir. And what will be the consequence? If you stop, uh, if you if they stop those intent, uh, uh, those transactions that ordinarily would take place, how then do you restart the entire process? So, you, you know, you throw spanners into the works of what is going on. I'm not saying, I remember what I said earlier, that he's not immune from arrest and prosecution. Not. But operating in silos means that you are saying, look, uh, you don't care as to the consequences. I, remember, the governor of a central bank of any country it's not just a nobody. And there are interactions and linkages with other other thank, entities. Thank you so for, for monetary policy concept. There are also investors who are waiting for signaling. Look, if it's in quoted companies, for instance, if you remove the chairman or the chairman is sacked or the CEO or the CFO, you see the way the markets react. It happens in banks, you know. Precisely. One right. of the board is begin uh, people begin to tinker with it. Uh, people who have their deposits in the banks begin to Absolutely. That's what happens. So that's a great point. Hmm. Okay, I, I, but thank you, gentlemen, for your points. Uh, I, I'm wondering where the the, the 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 source of the first, you know, report that he had been arrested. What no, was the source? Of no, that? rumors I mean, are always the free to precisely. Fly. So we yes. should, people should stop. Uh, you know, we must verify our claims before we go to public. This is personal. I, I you know. think it's irritating. So. The one that gladdens my heart, if I leave, lady and gentleman, is that 23 shiploads of uh, petroleum products uh, have arrived in Lagos. Uh, this um, uh, fuel supply means a lot to me. I don't know about the two of you. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, I mean, just, just fix, your uh, fix your refineries. That's, 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 I, that's I, I thought you would also uh, speak on the issue of um, at, uh, the, the issue the P Tinimbu's PCC you know, raised over uh, Atiku and calling for his arrest. And uh, I don't know, the likely impact of, uh, of, of that, of this call, of this position now. There's a procedural, you know, edge to some of these things. You call for people's arrest. What has been tendered or what has been dug up by the security agencies to warrant an arrest? Kingsley just said, even with the operational, reasonable operational autonomy that the CDN uh, enjoys, uh, the CDN governor is not above the law. He doesn't have immunity. So, same goes for the presidential candidates. The point is this. If you have a point, out with it, help the security agencies to realize whatever goal you want to achieve concerning what you see as a dark sports. Uh, on, on the other, uh, uh, on your opponent. Uh, okay. Well, Chukudi, I, I uh, thanks for that point that you just raised because Claire has drawn our attention to it again, and it's also the list story on the front page of, of the leadership newspaper. Uh, I was on I was on holidays when the story broke. Uh, I, I I'm not sure uh, I, I followed that aspect. If you if you gentlemen and ladies discussed it, what is critical to me is that look, if you live in glass houses, don't throw stones. And it has to do with a comment made by a former image maker for the uh, former vice president. Say the uh, former vice president was talking about an SPV, that's a special purpose vehicle, uh, for purposes of funding the political parties. People should go back and check out the history mm -hmm. of the stories around the Second Republic. They should also go back and check the stories around the First Republic, uh, how parties were funded in addition, of course, to subscriptions and so on and so forth. But more crucially for me, more crucially is what is the fiduciary duty 
of a spokesperson for any person. An image maker. If I am your image maker, fiduciary. What, yeah, what is my fiduciary duty? Uh, let's let, let's put it this way: professionals have fiduciary duties. Lawyers, for instance, mm -hmm. doctors. Uh, so, information you disclose to me in confidence uh, should be information mm -hmm. I keep in confidence. So, what is the fiduciary duty of an image maker? And I think that that's one critical question that public relations practitioners and scholars will have to focus on. Uh, at some point, I'm not getting into the details of what was said. What, so what is your fiduciary duty? I walk into a clinic or admit my regular uh, family doctor, and of course, I disclose a certain ailment uh, to the medical doctor if it's a social disease and I don't have any or any, any such thing. Is the doctor going to go out and start broadcasting, say, kicks that you watch on NTA? Don't you, don't, don't you see the way this That broadcast? would amount to a betrayal. <laughs> Well, uh, the Nigerian public uh, uh, relations, Kisley, mm. you, you've, brought, you've called them in now, mm. and I think they should rightly, you know, do the needful and uh, ensure that the, the the profession is professionalized. As you end it, <laughs> I hope we reintroduced him properly. I, I, we no, welcome no, no, him no, back no, properly. No. <laughs> we can't call him our, our <laughs> learned friend, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Chukudi. Chukudi. It's okay. But we are happy to see you again. Oh, they are. Oh, yeah. What was that thing again? Oh, my um, goodness. A sight for so eyes. Sight for so eyes. Uh, for Kinsley. Kinsley. So, we'll Kinsley, welcome forever. back again. <laughs> Thank you very much, Claire. Welcome back, my brother. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, two, jolly, yes. two jolly friends here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll begin our topic for today. Just a reminder, uh, our focus will be on the Ashwaju project. And the professionals will be here to speak to us. On this. Nigeria, we go to the EPC, not the party, now one more beer. Nigeria, we go to the EPC, not the party, now one more beer. We the president we need. We the president we go for. People of Nigeria, don't talk all them saying that she was to ball at him who they want. As president of Nigeria, our country people get many reasons we make them all agree. Say na Ashiwa Dubona Tinubu them choose for this president election. Yes, so Bona Tinubu na man we sapi. Anything we put in hand, it they work well. He do better work for Lagos State when he be governor. Till today, Lagos people see they enjoy from all the better better things we jabrata for Lagos. People of Nigeria, he good to make we vote for who sabi. Yes, they can't be so. Make we all come out for election day and vote for Ahmed Tinubu as president of Nigeria. Vote Senator Kashim Shetima as a Vice President, what APC? The party with the broom. Who be the president? We go vote. St. Matthew Royal College, a class in the sub sahara Education is not just class teaching, it is a total upbringing of the child. Hence, the UNESCO standard for quality education states as thirds well equipped physical infrastructure, top class trained teachers, library and IT rooms stocked with books and computers, 24 hours internet connectivity, entrepreneurship center where skills are taught, adequate water, sanitation, and hygiene facilities, 24 hours power supply, students' health clinic, security at its best as at Matthew Royal College and Miss Borden Secondary School where principal and staff are accommodated within the premises for a better equal eye supervision of the students. St. Matthew's Royal College, Edienu Ewu Uromi Road, Edo State. For admissions and inquiry, 076-832-9756. Visit our website, stmatthewsroyal.com slash admissions. Operation Wild Punch covers Kaduna and Niger State. The operation was recently reorganized to also cover the critical Kaduna, Abuja Kaduna Expressway, which had a defunct standby alone operation, code name Operation Fender Strike. Additionally, as part of the Operation Wild Punch, a subsidiary operation codename Operation Forest Sanity has also been launched to flesh out the terrorists from the forest that straddle Kaduna and Niger states. These efforts were geared towards fleshing out criminal elements from the Kaduna Abuja Expressway and its environs. 
I am pleased to inform that Kaduna Kaduna Expressway has been secured through a combined efforts of the armed forces, the police, and other security agencies. This message is brought to you from the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being a good boy, by being civil, patriotic and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. The Council of Our Fathers I will urge and advise our younger generation to use talent and brain to sort out problems, not uh, arms. Nigerian youth, let's build our nation together. You're watching Good Morning Nigeria, and we're live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Now, as the presidential elections draw closer, so also the intensity of campaigns by the candidates who are seeking elective positions in the country. Our correspondent, Abu Salam Jibri, gives us an insight into the Ashiwaju 2023 project ahead of the presidential polls next month. It is just over a month to the presidential elections and some experts maintain that the electioneering process has reached fever pitch. Some of the 18 political parties, along with their presidential candidates, have been traversing the length and breadth of the country wooing the electorate. The world's security elections. One of such parties and candidates is Asuwaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu of the All Progressives Congress, APC. Recall that in June last year, Bola Tinubu emerged victorious, clinching the party's ticket with 1,271 votes, defeating 13 other aspirants at the end of the special national convention of the party. The following month, he picked the former governor of Borono State, Senator Kashim Shatima, as his running mate. By October 2022, the 80-page manifesto titled Renewed Hope 2023 Action Plan for a Better Nigeria was unveiled that focuses on national security, economy, agriculture, power, oil and gas, transportation and education, among others. In November last year, the APC Professional Forum commenced the public engagement of the 80-page action plan. It aims to dissect the Tunubu Economic Blueprint for National Prosperity, the Tunubu Infrastructural Roadmap for Nigeria's Development, the Tunubu Judicial and Law Reform for Nigeria, and the Tunubu Panacea for a Safe and Secure Nigeria. It also aims to educate and get feedback from the electorate on the manifesto. So we have to wear our thinking caps, think outside the box, form a robust solution. We have the internet, we have the capacity. Let's get the right people. Now, what makes Renewed Hope 2023 Action Plan for a Better Nigeria unique? How does it hope to consolidate on the gains made by the present administration? Are there plans to further educate and sensitize Nigerians on what the manifesto is all about before the elections? 
These will form the crux of discussions as guests speak to the Asuwaju 2023 project shortly. All right, that excerpt was put together by our correspondent, Abdul Salam Jubre, uh, bringing us to a conversation segment on Good Morning Nigeria. Uh, just to remind you once again that we are focusing on the Asuwaju Project 2023. And we have our guests all ready for us. So let's begin our conversations. Uh, Dr. Isa, His Excellency, Dr. Isa Yuguda, is Chairman, Board of Trustees, APC Professionals Forum, and of course, his former Governor of Borchester State. He joins us right here in the studio. Excellency, good morning. Good morning, ma. Good morning. And good to have you with us. Yeah, same. Also joining us in the studio is His Excellency Ambassador Hassan Mohammed Hassan and his Chairman Symposium Planning Committee of the APC Professionals Forum. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good to be here. All right. Also part of uh, this conversation and here in the studio is architect uh, Waziri Bulama a member of the Board of Trustees of the APC Professionals Forum and also former National Secretary of the All Progressives uh, Congress. Uh, architect Bulama, we're glad to have you this morning. Thank you. And uh, part of this conversation also, for this time via Zoom, we would like to welcome Babatunde Ogala. Uh, Babatunde Ogala is a Senior Advocate of Nigeria, former member of the Lagos State House of Assembly, and Chairman, Contact and Mobilization Subcommittee. BK, SAN, glad to have you this morning. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here this morning. All right, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. And um, let me begin with the Chairman of the Forum. And uh, I'd just for, like for His Excellency uh, to give us an insight because uh, this for uh, the program you're about to have, is organized by the professionals for yes, yes, yes. if you can just give us an insight what's the nexus between professionals and politics well um uh, thank you very much madam uh, i want to uh, simply put it uh, in a very simplified manner the nexus between you know the politics and uh, professionalism i think uh has come to be uh, because all along, you know, politics have been taken as a profession of uh, charlatans, a profession uh, where, I mean, nobody, people don't want to go into it because they, they don't believe that uh, responsible people should go into politics. And of course, uh, as time, you know, uh, you know, uh, went on, we come to realize that, look, Professionals have to be in the business of politics uh, because it is uh, it's the, it's, it's the system that runs, you know, society. So it's the profession that runs society, and which is why professionals should be part of, you know, uh, you know, uh, politics. Because at the time of uh, forming uh, governments, uh, you need professionals to run the system, and of course. Uh, uh, the experience of Nigeria, I believe, uh, because of the absence of professionals as time, you know, as we uh, were learning on the learning curve, had, uh, you know, impacted negatively on the rate at which we are growing. So with professionals coming into it, from artisans to rocket scientists in the business of politics, we can see a lot of value being, uh, you know, added to the system. We can see a lot of... Uh, you know, uh, corrections being made here and there to make sure that we come up with uh, on a, uh, we come up on a fast track, uh, you know, uh, the way of uh, you know uh, growing our society and uh, growing our economy and deepening the politics itself, because uh, most of these professionals, uh, <coughs> I mean, they are, um, they have uh, educated themselves in their own way, because for you to be a bricklayer or uh, you know. Uh, a mason, you have to learn the art. For you to be a shoe, sh um, uh, somebody who is a shoe, sh you have to learn, you're a cobbler, you have to learn the art. So it is skillful people now moving into the business rather than those who have not had any uh, kind of profession in their life, uh, given that uh, 
the, the impression there is that uh, uh, you don't have to be a professional. In fact, it is not even business of professional to be in politics. It's only business of those who are not educated to be in politics. So I think uh, that is where uh, you know we found it very necessary to uh, to establish uh, to form the professional forum as an arm of the APC that uh, will serve as a, a reservoir of uh, resources from where the party can draw from when it uh, forms government. And these professionals uh, are from all over the world. Nigerians in Diafra, we have a close to about 50 countries now uh, where Nigerians are, and they are all registered members of us. Uh, so if uh, it might be very easy for those in government or if they want to put a square peg in a square hole, if it is not found in Nigeria, the resource can also be tapped for maybe from UK, the US, where our Nigerian brothers and sisters are located and doing very well contributing to uh, the economies of those countries. So I think that's uh, uh, the reason behind the whole exercise of forming the... the well, uh, thank you very much uh, for your explanation, uh, Dr. Yugud. Uh, but I'm tempted uh, to ask a follow-up to the question posed by my colleague, Claire, namely, other than getting professionals to participate in politics, mm -hmm. what should be the role of professionals in governance? You get into politics, you get political power, and you are in office, and you are running the system, and the system is going on well or not going on so well. What is the role of professionals? Should they only be heard uh, loud and clear when elections are around the corner, or why governance is in process? Akita Bulama, I will start with you. Well, yes. Thank you very much. Um, you know, professionals are trained you know, in analytical thinking. Are based, uh, you, know, you know, for all the professions, with the architecture, engineering, medicine, accounting, insurance, uh, all, uh, you know, people who are in these professions, uh, they are trained as uh, critical uh, thinkers uh, that um, apply their knowledge uh, to find solutions to problems. Uh, professionals generally, you know, whether in politics or in governance, uh, they generate data, you know, create information and bring certainty into uncertainty. They make something out of ambiguity and they prefer, you know, uh, solutions. You know, they design, they give briefs, reports and so on. So um, those uh, uh, professionals, let's say, in, in, in politics shape the way things are done within the political party. Uh, the systems and the processes and the procedures to ensure transparency and accountability and justice and fairness so as to deepen, you know, uh, confidence and trust, you know, among the party members. But the professional also influence the emergence of the manifesto and the programs as we have done now in shaping uh, the policies and the programs to, uh, as given, for instance, by our candidate. Uh, it's largely, uh, you know, generated by the professionals within our party, you know, doctors and uh, lawyers and, uh, you know, all sorts of uh, professionals. So when the professionals come into government, they also contribute towards uh, shaping, you know, policies, implementing those undertakings uh, that were made to Nigerians to get the vote. So professionals, of course, at the level of government, they are concerned with implementation of those undertakings and the policies in line with uh, manifesto and in line with the constitution of the country. And, uh, you know, governors, of course, uh, is essentially in the aim at ensuring, uh, implementing the constitution, ensuring peace and uh, security and the welfare, you know, of citizens. So all these policies uh, that um, the party uh, promised or took undertaking to be voted, the, the implementation of these policies will be shaped by the professionals within um, the, the, the within the government. So some of these policies will be done uh, with the professionals that are already in government in the bureaucracy, but there are, there are also professionals, you know, uh, in the wider Nigerian setting, consultants and other knowledge workers and and uh, and and so on. These are also will be involved, you know, in shaping to ensure that um, policies in government are you know effective and efficient uh, for the benefit of uh, Nigerians. Okay, Ambassador uh, Hassan Mohammed Hassan. Um, 
let's look at the, the, the gap um, that, you know, exists because we can't say we've not had professionals mainstreamed or integrated into our governance system. We have professional technocrats. Yet, you know, <laughs> you, you, you and I know, you know, the, the, the level of governance and, and the quality of, of governance, you know, across all tiers of, of government. In fact, some believe or, say, or have the you know, impression that when technocrats get into, into government, they are in there for precisely what, you know, they hope to, to attain. So how would you evaluate the involvement of technocrats, professionals, that you call professionals, even within the government system at the moment? Good. Uh, professionals, <clears throat> uh, they are very disciplined people. They are people that work on basic facts and that are generated by the society. So when you want to incorporate them into the system, basically now, if you have, uh, for example, um, a doctor, uh, a doctor will want to have everything in place before he operates or before he takes on uh, a venture on someone who is sick. If you take somebody who is not a doctor, what will be the outcome? So to get professionals at the highest echelon of government and at the lowest rank of government, they display kind of professionalism in their outlook, in their approach to solving problems. That is where you expect them to be. And once they are in a position of authority, that means they will uh, speak, they are heard, and they will influence government decision. Mm -hmm. So such influence will come to bear on their output. So in the final analysis, the society as a whole gets their better off than just getting people that are not uh, professionals, that are not qualified, competent to execute government projects. But in, in evaluation, uh, I, I asked, how would you evaluate the quality of the outcome of the involvement of those professionals in government? Because we've had, you know, over the years we've had them in government. Yes. We've had them at top positions, you know, preferring solutions, policy directions, strategies, and programs. Yeah, uh, there is a disconnect. The disconnect is you have the professionals proposing or pro uh, coming up with ideas on how to work. Those that are to approve those policies, they might not, because um, I'm sorry to say, I mean, politicians, uh, <laughs> uh, what guide they are thinking might not be uh, uh, what the society needs. Public interest. Public interest. So you have to see this is the gap that the professionals forum is trying to, uh, to fill. Uh, okay, thank you very much, uh, Ambassador uh, Hassan, uh, for the comments that you have made. Let's bring in now uh, Babatunde Kwame Ogala. Uh, the former uh, legal advisor also of APC. Now, tomorrow, the second edition of the uh, symposium will be taking place. The first uh, held in November last year. When we say November now, that will be uh, like two months or so ago. Uh, what was the outcome of the first uh, symposium that is now uh, providing the impetus for what's taking place tomorrow? Thank you, um, um, Kingsley, and um, it's good to reconnect with you again, and perhaps for the first time on your program. Um, what first? Let's look at what we sought out to achieve when we had the first, what I would call the first diet of this dissecting the Ashura Jew Manifesto, renewed hope. What did we set out to achieve? We found out that over time. Parties and candidates throw programs at the people. They throw manifestos at the people. And like my colleagues have said, we are professionals. 
We are very well informed, educated people. We feel the party. So we went out of our way to bring together the cream of our party, the cream of society, to come and dissect what this manifesto is about. And what do we mean by dissecting it? We shredded it. We did a post-mortem on it. We did an autopsy of this manifesto and brought out the basic understanding of the issues in the common man, in the common man's language. We brought it out for people to clearly understand the vision of our presidential candidates, his vision for the country, his vision for Nigerians, and his plans. And what we have done are what he has put forward are implementable plans. We are the fear of Saudi the modest. We are the only party that out there that has a manifesto that is being talked about. We are the only candidate that has a plan of action that everybody is discussing. We are the only party and we are the only group that have brought together the cream of its membership, the professionals within its membership, to come and put this thing, dissect it, and educate the public. And that is what we sought to achieve with the success of the first edition. And um, even if I'm the one saying it, it was indeed a huge success, well covered, which made for a better understanding. At that diet, we treated four sectors. Now we are taking another three, women and youth development, energy and power, and agriculture. Of course, we did not talk about, we did not remind ourselves of the importance of these sectors to our economy. Nigeria, a very arable country, not doing well in agriculture, of course, until the Buhari administration elected to give it a strong focus and apply some force in seeing that agriculture take its pride of place. Power, that has continuously, power and energy have continuously been the bait. We are blessed with everything to generate power. We are blessed with everything to manage our own resources, but are we doing so? Ashiwaju, in his plan of action, has provided a roadmap and is what we are now asking our group of experts to come and dissect, to come and break down to pieces for Nigerians to understand. Of course, women and youth empowerment. Um, we are conscious of the women's affirmation, um, Beijing, call, Beijing declaration, and what have you. Of course, our team in youth. Um, today, they say the youth account about um, 40, almost 50% of our population, including the voting population. What is the program for them? And I, I just say this here. It is not enough to keep saying the youths are behind me, the youths are behind me, or I have plans for the youths. What are those plans? This is what the Ashwajo Renewal Program has put down on paper. And that is what we have elected as a group of informed and educated professionals within the party to come and open up for clear understanding of the Nigerian youths, of the Nigerian women, of what this man has in stock for you. I say again, it is not enough to be on social media and we mount youth, youth, youth. What are those plans? You don't put your plans in your head and you think you alone to understand your plans. Let the public understand it. Let the world understand it. Let the people connect with it. And that is what we are doing. And that is what we are saying. Kisli Osadolo, NTA, and inviting Nigerians to come to the um, Yadua Center tomorrow and see our group of experts, our group of professionals dissect this program, explain it in the very basic strict language that everyone will understand. And I repeat again. Let it say, let it say, let it with a roadmap. <laughs> Leonard sake, uh, Ogala, th thank you. Uh, you seem to be fast forwarding us. Uh, thanks for the invitation extended to my colleague, but he will be right here in the studio uh, t tomorrow. 
uh, but somehow I'm sure we'll manage to find a way to be at the event. But let me stay with you. I, I, I'd like for you to clarify the context of success because Kinsley asked you what was the outcome of, of the first event you held and you said it was a huge <coughs> success. Could you give us the context? Is there any tangible uh, outcome that we can use to evaluate the success so that when, when the viewer you know, is listening, he or she can say, okay, have something to hold on to. Right. What was the success of the first seminar, if I get you right? And how do we measure success? How do we measure success by how much we have been able to break this to brass tack. We measure success by the public perception. We measure success by the feedback from within the party. We measure success by even how the candidate himself, because it is important that when you bring up my program and you say you are dissecting it, because like I said, dissecting is like doing a surgical operation on it. And that was what we did. So we measure the success by the perception, by the feedback we have received, by the reported, by the coverage, and above all, by how it has made for a, an easy and basic understanding. And of course, the acceptability of our candidate as a follow-up to that event. We cannot say for now, because uh, actually Tinubu, by the grace of God, would assume office on May 29th. We can only measure the success and implementation after that date. For now, it is what it is. There are plans, there are workable plans, there are implementable plans with timelines. He has also provided a roadmap. This is how we intend to do it. One thing is to say, I want to do this. Another is how. He has not only said, this is what I will do. We have, he has identified the problems. He has identified solutions. And he has also laid a road pathway on how to solve those problems that have been identified. Like I said, this is the only candidate. And I start to be corrected. Who has a trending action plan. This is the only candidate whose action plan is being discussed. This is the only candidate who at every of his outing, be it at rallies, be it at meetings with sectoral groups, be it at the town hall meetings, is taking on each and every sector. And as a group of professionals within the polity, we also feel we have a duty to complement what he's doing. We also have a duty. And we must say this, I mean, you can see the array of people who are seated in your studio, a former governor, an ambassador, a very renowned and distinguished architect. Uh, Isa Yuguda, besides being a former governor, was the managing director of a bank. That's how far how you can go. Um, your Excellency was an ambassador, a career ambassador. Of course, my brother, uh, Wazir Bulama, a distinguished, renowned architect, and a fellow of the Institute. And my humble self, I say humble, um, a lawyer, a modest small lawyer in Nigeria. I mean, these are the crop, I mean, these are the crop of people who have put themselves together who are within this polity. And we just felt we can't just sit down within the polity and be just be howling and shouting behind candidates. Let us put these things to test. So, what does this tell you? This tells you that the candidates, when elected, not only has a crop of good heads who shall be his ombudsman, because beyond supporters, we are also going to be the ombudsman who are going to keep reminding our kind, hey, sir, excellency, this is our roadmap. This is our manifesto. This is our action plan. This is what we, 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 we promise to do. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Babatunde Ogala, for the comments that you have made. Uh, I'm sure some of our viewers who are watching at this time, uh, including all who are in the studios, are concerned about date. It is very significant. Uh, you did say that your candidate uh, will uh, become president on May 29. You didn't add the year. 
is it 2023 or you are looking at 2027 or 2031 so uh, just uh, to indicate that I, I wonder let's come back uh, to our guest here in the studios uh, Dr. Uh, Isa Yuguda at, at the first symposium uh, there were conversations around the what is really described and I find that a bit curious the Tinubu economic blueprint uh, the Tunubu Infrastructural Roadmap, mm -hmm. the Tunubu Plan for a Safe and Secure Nigeria, uh, the Tunubu Plan for Judicial and Law Reform. Mm -hmm. I recognize the duality uh, in our electoral system. Uh, namely, a political party has to sponsor a candidate. Mm -hmm. So you have the party and then you also have the candidate. Uh, but are, are these uh, organic earth growths of the uh, APC critical document that will say this is what APC stands for or this is what Tinobu stands for? Dr. Yuguda. Well, uh, thank you very much, Kinsley. Um, you see, you cannot separate the two. You cannot separate the candidate from the party. Uh, uh, the candidate quite well can have his own ideas. He has a pool of, uh, you know, human resources that can give him ideas. At the same time, the party also does have his own pool of resources that can, you know, contribute to what you have today as the manifesto. And like uh, the Leonard Senior Advocate has tried to explain, the uh, manifesto, I would want to say, it is even beyond a manifesto. I can call it a martial plan. I have gone through manifestos, uh, you know, of different political parties uh, before and of course now. And of course, not only manifestos in Nigeria, but manifestos outside the country. And I'm assuring you, I want to assure Nigerians that this is it. Because if somebody uh, has a plan, and if you, you want to succeed, you must plan. If you don't plan, say, it is not generally said that you plan to fail. So this uh, document, which I call now a Marshall Plan for Nigeria, just like uh, they had the Marshall Plan to uh, reconstruct uh, post-World War uh, Europe, uh, is something that I see, you know, uh, as uh, taking off from where Buhari is going to live, the infrastructure and uh, the mileage he has uh, achieved, to launch us into the next phase of developing Nigeria. And if you look at the, uh, the manifesto, even the executive summary will give you a brief of what really the party and this right honorable gentleman, Asiwaji Bola Tunubu, is going to, uh, you know, uh, achieve. He has sequenced and prioritized these, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, activities in such a way that it makes a lot of sense. Look at the issue of security. Uh, you can't, uh, you can't, uh, you can't talk about development without security. In fact, especially economic development. And Nigeria doesn't have sufficient capital to develop the way we want to develop. We must have foreign capital. And they say capital is a coward. Generally said, it doesn't come into an environment where there is insecurity. We must bear this in mind and look at the emphasis the strategies he's put in place in the manifesto to fix security. If we say we're going to details now, we spend the next two, three hours discussing the issue of security that's contained in his own manifesto. So once he's able to fix security, the next phase is talking about, uh, you know, manufacturing. And when you say uh, job creation and manufacturing, he's targeting the youth. The rate of unemployment that we have in this country, the teeming millions of youth that don't have employment, is what is also contributing to our problems that we have today in the country. And you can see that he has a, you know, a clear vision on how to address it, maybe in the first one, two years. Then the next one is talking about manufacturing. You talk about manufacturing, also, you know, that's an, uh, you know, uh, the economy of the country. You are, you are, you are trying to drive uh, an economy that is export oriented and when you say export oriented these manufacturing industries they make sure i mean they they, they create a lot of jobs too and uh, they manufacture what we ordinarily are importing now so you can see that element of you know contributing to our foreign uh, reserves 
also that uh, you know, of creating jobs locally and at the same time improving on our you know exchange rate as a result of adding value to our foreign reserves so i can go on and on and on on this manifesto and nigerians can be amazed and of course by the time the uh, the, uh, the symposium is uh, you know like he did explain people are make, getting more educated on what asiwaji wants to do and i believe this is the first time it's happening that a candidate will come and set up a structure to educate the electorate on what i'm going to do and they can hold him on what he has promised to do but before then i don't think there is any party that has come out to say this one i'm going to, going to do and then i can be held responsible for uh, not implementing it he is open there is no hiding so we can see that now uh, the difference is very clear doable achievables like uh, he did earlier said with even milestones and like everybody knows, uh, our, our candidate has that speciality in putting square pegs in square holes. So that is where the professional forum becomes relevant. Because uh, uh, Her Excellency Madam mentioned that maybe politicians are this. But we are trying to change the narrative about the perception of who a politician is. Every politician is seen as somebody who is uh, a kleptomaniac. He goes into the treasury and starts pilfering. But like uh, my colleague, the ambassador said, uh, I mean, it's uh, professionals, if you are a real pro-bread professional who knows, uh, you know, his own onions and he knows that, look, he has a date with, uh, with death, uh, he wouldn't uh, go and start uh, touching blood money in the treasury. So this is people that we believe have conscience, not the ordinary politician that we see who is all about how will I make money, how will I cut corners. He has not made it in life, so I mean, his only way of making it is maybe uh, getting a political, uh, you know, appointment or getting uh, uh, elected into an office. But these are people who have made it in life when it comes to money. So I, I think, Kinsley, uh, uh, I have uh, attempted to address it. <laughs> but if yeah, I have more time, I'm sure I will continue talking on the manifesto, and yeah. you will be sufficiently, you sufficiently appreciate that. That is depth of knowledge that went into uh, you know the manifesto, and like we said, it is uh, something implemented to be implemented with timelines. Mm. That's the difference. So yes, we can hold us responsible when we come into government. Hold us why you responsible? Precisely what, you what say. yes, precisely what I was going to say, Excellency. We we do appreciate that you know you all found time to be on the on this program, mm -hmm. and uh, certainly it won't be the last until the elections. Um, Again, we also hope that when the time comes for the real professionals to do the work, we, we do hope that they'll be given opportunity. The politicians will not, you know, Precisely, yes. over them. We do hope that happens. So yeah. let us look at the professionals, the APC professionals for effect now on the key areas that the symposium will focus tomorrow. Uh, the Leonard Sake mentioned energy and power. Uh, women and youth, and even his, his, his body language confirms the fact that sometimes issues of women and youth, you know, really take the front burner. You know, we said, yeah, and of course, mm -hmm. women and youth. But I hope, I hope in this, you know, it will, it will be given mm. a priority. Okay, so let's look at energy and uh, uh, power, electricity, which is a big challenge. Or has been a big challenge uh, so far we do acknowledge improvement in power supply you know in some parts of the country at least where i say i call it mnk district uh it's only kinsley and i that you know where the okay. district is located i, I, in I, I, I don't stay in that location <laughs> no you don't stay but you know where it's i know yeah i know i know what it means <laughs> i know what it means you know yeah. mnk by the way is maraba you know, Yan Yan and Karu, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, so, MNK, MNK, MNK. district, okay. yes, MNK district, mm -hmm. yes. Not Mazunam, the Kano. Okay, anyway, so, so let's, let's look at power now, and I'm wondering what is the professional forum's effect on efficiency power distribution? How can we make power distribution socially beneficial for all Nigerians. Yes, you're excellent. Let's start with you. Okay. Um, the professional forum, professionals forum, is 
um, a support group, a very specialized support group, something that has not happened amongst uh, support groups in the country. Um, what they are working on, they have kind of futuristic approach to issues. Uh, right now is extremely difficult because what we are talking about, we are talking about proposals that are to be implemented by the Aswaju government that will, inshallah, come to power 29th May 2003. I mean, 2003. <laughs> 2023 are monitoring and we are doing our best to make sure that once that, part, that the government comes into place, we will insist in our own ways and failure on their own part will hold their feet to the fire to insist that this is what you said and you have to implement or else come <coughs> whatever excuse that will be acceptable to us. So as far as we are concerned, we'll stick to that, we'll be professional, we'll be uh, adamant and we'll want the government that will come to what are your areas of concern we are interested in the distribution we are interested in the generation and transmission. transmission so there are problems there uh, how the um, uh, electricity the whole electricity industry uh, was some partially privatized, some fully privatized to individuals that don't have capacity. So, and this is a crass evidence of lack of professionalism. So, if professionals are there, that is likely going not to happen. Electrical or electricity from generation to distribution to everything is our approach and we'll face it squarely and this we're not relenting once the government comes in so we are <coughs> sensitizing people now to see that this is what aswaju has in stock for you and we want you to take note and we will pursue to the letter except if for whatever reason they come up with uh excuses but those excuses must be genuine and acceptable to the people. All right, thank you very much, uh, Ambassador uh, Hassan. Let's bring in again, Architect Waziri Bulama. Architect uh, Bulama, mm -hmm. I, I, I assume that you have uh, an insight into the uh, Asiwaju project <laughs> and manifesto. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, I want to go back to part of the question I posed to uh, Dr. Yuguda. Mm -hmm. Namely, is this a Tinubu project or an APC mm -hmm. project? But it's been answered. And I'm then proceeding from that mm. to say, look, what are the baseline assumptions in the Tinubu Manifesto? Because we cannot assume that, assuming, for instance, that Tinubu wins the election and is sworn in on the 29th of May 2023, mm. that the entire country is a tabula rasa. No. If you talk about the infrastructural roadmap, there is already a, a master plan for infrastructure in the country, mm. which is ongoing. And that infrastructural uh, master plan will not terminate on the 28th of May. Mm. You see, as Suwaju economic blueprint, there is already a national development plan yes. incorporating the economic aspects and so on and so forth on manufacturing that uh, 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 Dr. Issa Yuguda talked about. So, how does the Asiwaju Manifesto diverge from or extend what is already in existence that would not terminate by the 28th of May, 2023? Yeah, um, <clears throat> you see, going back to the first question you, you know, raised uh, with His Excellency, um, you know, whatever, you know, we have in the um, Asiwaju Manifesto, which he refers to as a Marshall Plan, which can be, you know, compared to a Marshall Plan, um, came out 
of the promise and undertaking of the APC, you know, as a party, because we came uh, together and formed this party uh, in 2013, you know, largely, you know, to address uh, the democratic deficits and governance deficits that were evident, you know, in the first uh, 16 years of our experience, you know, uh, under the Fourth uh, Republic. And um, so, they, and uh, of course, the party itself, you know, has its own uh, manifesto. And uh, the, this Aswaju manifesto uh, came out of the party's manifesto, you know, as well as the implementation uh, and the, the experience of our being in power in the last two, you know, 10 years, 2015 to 2019, where we promised, you know, to change a lot of things to ensure that rule of law, uh, infrastructure and so on are uh, addressed. And then in the second, uh, uh, you know, uh, tenure from 2019 to now, where we consolidated on ensuring that um, institutions of state, the judiciary, uh, the security agencies, uh, the electoral process, all these institutions are, are strong and uh, serve land, they, they work without interference and they work in line with the constitution of the country and the constitution, uh, whatever constitution requires of, of these institutions. Uh, the literature on, you know, comparative development studies of nations, you know, when you ask, okay, why is, why are some countries developed or prosperous than, you know, others and so on, uh, most experts tell us that the difference actually is in uh, democracy, strong institutions, uh, ensuring rule of law, and infrastructure. And uh, we've done quite a lot in ensuring that the system that we are you know, operating, this democratic system, that is accountable and that is also driven by the people, you know, works. You know, and um, we've ensured that uh, our leadership does not interfere you know, in any of the processes that run this institution. The institutions are strong and independent now like uh, the developed uh, countries. That's why, for instance, today um, the emphasis uh, on, uh, on, on, on the campaign, actually they're all issue-based, they're targeting the voter, uh, unlike the previous uh, you know, uh, experiences where people prepare for violence and intimidation and uh, manipulation. But right now the emphasis on, you know, is on, 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 on the voters and uh, on how to persuade and convince voters to come out and, and vote in line with their conscience. And there's a commitment from the, our leadership to ensuring that, you know, we deliver free and fair, you know, elections. So, uh, in all these pairs of uh, our undertaking, especially, I mean, in this uh, Asuaju Manifesto, in agriculture, in youth and, 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 and women in, in power, we are building on, you know, achievements and attainments that had already been recorded. For instance, it, you know, the key areas that we are going to address in the symposium tomorrow uh, for women and youth. Uh, obviously, uh, our party has a lot of uh, has take, undertaken many affirmative measures to bring in women. Uh, for instance, in the processes that led to our uh, to our conventions and congresses, we ensured that there, there is more inclusiveness of women, and women were deliberately you know involved in uh, the choice of delegates. Uh, we have also ensured that women, for instance, uh, don't buy forms. We, you know, uh, uh, the just expression of interest uh, and so on. Lama, and then, we and pass, then we we pass, pass, we pass we'll, and we've also signed this, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, not too young to run bill where youth are supposed to mm. have, you know, clear access mm -hmm. to. So we have, the manifesto captures this and has more details on how to consolidate on this. And there is, all, in terms of power too, uh, where His Excellency talked about, you know, power generation power transmission and power distribution. Uh, already, you know, the whole uh, country is aware that we have uh, power generated which has not been, you know, taken to distribution. And a lot of investment right now and work is going on to improve the transmission uh, system. So that uh, by the middle of this year or so, I mean, we'll not only, you know, as you rightly uh, acknowledge that there is improvement in power supply in our neighborhoods, MN, K, MNK, and many others, you see, but throughout the country, Power has, you know, improved, and we are seeing that when we transfer power generated to uh, the to distribution, uh, we believe that um, there will be real, uh, there will be reasonable sufficiency, you know, 24-hour power supply in the country, and in terms of, you know, energy uh, sufficiency, especially uh, provision of. Uh, uh, you know, oil, uh, petrol, you know, gas, and, and other, you know, there, there are some specific, by, there are by some, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interject. Yes. There are some specifics. Yes. 
that you could highlight for the benefit of our viewers yes. and ultimately your supporters. Yes. Take again the power sector. Yes. We've had uh, some threats. Yes. Over the last few years, to say, look, the privatization exercise of the downstream sector of the power uh, value chain, namely distribution, was poorly done. And therefore, we are going to revise it. And we're going to do X, Y, Z. Is that part of what Ashibadu is promising? We know what the challenges are across the value chain. Jenkos, we know the issues with TCN. TCN, 100% federal government, uh, government owned. Uh, is, 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 is Ashibadu uh, going to unbundle TCN from at of 2005? What are the specifics? Go back to the Jenkos. The Jenkos have been having running battles, for instance. They've been having running battles over the price of gas mm. for those of them that are uh, thermal power stations. What is the plan to say, look, we will stop all this uh, to and fro about uh, today we have gas, tomorrow we don't have gas? This uh, details would be the substance you know, of our symposium tomorrow. Uh, the symposium is arranged in such a manner that we would have an expert who will focus on giving this, who already have been mobilized and energized you know, to come in uh, into, this, uh, into, this, uh, into this program. So I believe that these details, uh, there may not be sufficient time to discuss uh, these details, as His Excellency earlier mentioned, for us to focus on the specifics of this uh, you know, uh, the, the nitty gritty, the, the nitty -gritty. but will be, it will be captured in the manifest, uh, in the symposium uh, tomorrow, uh, and fully, you know, this thing uh, would be fully explained. And suffice to say that um, the activities of the, you know, professions forum has clearly, I mean, so far excited and um, uh, drawn the attention of, um, you know, all Nigerians, uh, professionals, you know, uh, you know engineers, uh, doctors, the MBA, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Institute of Architects, and, and Union of, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, graduates of uh, federal institutions and so on. So we intend, uh, we will be having them all involved in this discussion. They will be fully involved and mobilized and sensitized to take interest in what we are doing. Um, so that um, they will see what we are as a party and as a candidate we're offering uh, to Nigerians to ensure that we set this country in management based on the on global best practices. You know, as professionals, this is uh, what we're offering. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll we'll get them involved tomorrow. Your Excellency, you'd like to say, you know, uh, address that aspect of your question uh, that has to do with uh, you know. Uh, the power sector. Uh, the manifesto itself is a detailed study of what we've been doing, sector by sector, and it has isolated and identified what have been those problems that has disabled us from meeting up to our, you know, targets. They have all been isolated, and also solutions have been proffered. Just like you uh, spoke about maybe the discourse, we have problems, maybe generation, we have problems. All those problems have been sieved, identified, and then solutions have been preferred. And that's why it's not something that, uh, you know, we can go into the details. But to satisfy you and satisfy the public, that has been done. That's why I call that document a Marshall Plan. All the nitty-gritties, all the T's and the I's have been, I mean, dots have been, you know, uh, T's have been crossed and the I's have been dotted. And I want to uh, assure the public that uh, by the time it comes to implementation, we may not have any, any person who will allow Nigeria to make progress. Your Excellency, thank you. I, I don't know, the last time I checked, I don't know how many thousand megawatts uh, uh, capacity that we have installed, mm -hmm. uh, maybe more than 13 or thereabouts, and also our demand exceeds, you know, that it's about uh, maybe if not about more than 18 or 20, you know, thousand megawatts. Mm -hmm. So to bridge that gap would definitely require a Marshall plan Absolutely. in the power mm -hmm. sector. Yes. And then you have said. <coughs> We have a Marshall plan. Yeah, and Claire, I, 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 I mean, Marshall also acknowledge what uh, has been said. You said it, and Architect Bulama re emphasized it. Uh, 
electricity supply has been great, uh, was great mm -hmm. over the holiday period, mm -hmm. uh, Christmas and New Year. I mean, I mean, it was it was Fantastic. pleasant, well, mm -hmm. pleasant. Fantastic. But it appeared that near the end of last week, uh, those people who were in charge <laughs> resumed. And then they started. They started. Uh, seriously. Uh, you need to come and leave the Nevenk. You know, 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 As the 2023 elections draw near, remember, evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace, but never take a step to make peaceful elections happen. Are you a father? Are you a mother? What are you saying to your children as elections approach? Have you warned them not to let themselves be used to cause violence? Have you explained to them what the consequences of electoral violence might be? Do your part to make peaceful elections happen. Talk to your children. Protect them from unscrupulous politicians who want to put them in harm's way while their own children are comfortable at home, within and outside the country. Let's join hands to make 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. No. Nigerians, elections are here again. Let us shun violence. Let us play the game according to the rules. Do not be a thug. Say no to violence. Let's rise and defeat violence, crime and sabotage against the peace of our nation. Nigeria is the only country we have. We must do everything to keep it united. We must avoid any act that promotes hate and disintegration. Say no to separatist movement. And suspicious movements restrict access to sensitive documents and data, the disclosure of which may damage national security. Educate your staff and family, particularly on measures to safeguard information and report security breaches. Apply relevant legal security guidelines to protect yourself and your neighbors. Due to misinformation and wrong choices, some idle persons resort to vices in their greed to get rich quick. The resort to kidnapping, killings for rituals, and other heinous crimes. Avoid wrong use of the social media. Before you broadcast that false message, think twice. Ask whether it will promote peace or violence. For safety at home, still be security conscious. Educate your household on safety tips. Report all suspicious movements and persons to the security agencies nearest to you. Be a good citizen. Be patriotic. To pass security information, please call 0813-222-2105-0915-3391309-0908-837-3514 or send a mail to dsspr at dss.gov.ng. This message is from the Department of State Services, DSS. The security situation in Nigeria has been reasonably stable in spite of activities of unpatriotic elements engaged in various criminal activities around the country. Daily situation reports coming in from states two months ago it has shown relative peace on many of our highways such as Abuja, Kaduna, Kaduna Berningwali, Sokoto Zamfara, Zamfara Kaduna. This message is brought to you from the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Finally, the hero of Nigeria's democracy has arrived. He shall usher us into a new phase of development, peace and prosperity. He is the father of the new Nigeria. His Excellency President Muhammad Dupa, DCFR. Welcome to another season of Giving Nigerians Hope yet again. We are sure of a great future for both ourselves and generations yet on board. We look forward to your leading us as a nation into our manifest destiny. Though the challenges against us as a people are many, we know that your leadership shall set us on the right path.
part of our greatness. A new dawn beckons on us all and having you as our president is a precursor to this. Thank you for believing in Nigeria. This message is from the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. All right, welcome back. It's good morning, Nigeria, and we are dissecting the uh, Shiwaju uh, Manifesto, Renewed Hope 2023 Action Plan for a Better Nigeria. A symposium is being planned for tomorrow here in Abuja, and it's uh, going to be looking at um, key areas in the manifesto, uh, energy and power, women and youth issues, agriculture and of course food security and we're having a conversation around the manifesto and of course this core area so let's now get to uh our zoom connection where leonard sig babatunde ogala is joining us from and um i would like him also i know you may want to speak on the um uh divergence or convergence of the Asiwaju uh, Manifesto of uh, uh, Implementation. Kinsley asked the question earlier on. But also take with you, sir, I'd like to know what you intend or what you envisage to do with regards to women and youth issues. Other than the uh, usual, okay, free uh, nomination forms or other than the usual uh, woman leader position, Ministry of Women Affairs and all that. Do you have any paradigm shift? Are you considering any paradigm shift in terms of consideration <coughs> for these, you know, very unique group of people? Namely, gender issues, child rights issues, women rights issues, violence against gender, and so on and so forth. Um, thank you. Um... But before I go to that, um, there was the question by Kingsley on um, whether Ashwaju will bundle transmission. I think I heard that um, a few minutes ago. Ashwaju has clearly, I think, in one of the town hall meetings um, with the organized private. That transmission has to be unbundled and that it was going to take that bold step. And if you recall too, far back in 2000 and 2000, 2001, Ashwaju, as governor of Lagos State, was audacious and visionary enough to have thought about Lagos generating its own powers. And he brought in a power company that was generating, I think, about 3.5 kV. But of course, that project was frustrated by the then product government because they insisted it had to go through the national grid. So having been a victim of such, I think I can assure you that Shwaji Tinubu will be audacious enough, and as he has demonstrated, and he has openly said, he will be audacious enough to go and of do this unbundling of transmission. Lagos today does have grid, ugly it, it cannot be commercialized. So if it could be experimented in Lagos and is worked successfully in the past 15 or so years, I can assure you it will be audacious enough to still go further and do for the country. Then coming to the issue of women and youth, um, the question was clear. We hope it will be another talk. I'm one who has often said that for anybody, and it is my strong belief that track record speaks for people. Hello? Hello? Bye. Okay, okay. I was I was wondering because I could see the network freezing. So I wanted to be sure that I'm still on. That track record speaks for people. In the opportunities you have been given on this area one talks about, what have you done with it? First, to take you back again to what he has stated in his Renewed Hope program. 
And with your permission, I just want to read, read out um, to what Ashwaju has promised. He has clearly stated there that his is not going to be, not in this exact words, is not a government of tokenism. He has clearly talked about affirmative action. He has talk, clearly talked about the role the youth will play in his government. And again, I can only go. Hello? Again? Hello? Again, I can only but go back to track record of what he did when he was governor, what he has done in his politics. Look around that Shivaji, and you see a lot of young people who are his thinking for him and working for him. I remember one of the um, presidential campaign council meeting, um, meetings we had. After he had presented this same manifesto, he called a young man who now came to dissect it. That showed, and he clearly, to use his words, one of the smartest youths who are the future of this country to come and do the dissection. If you were present with his meeting with the organized private sector in Lagos, um, you would have seen how he also threw up young people. And of course, how he also threw up women. Ashwaju, in his program, has clearly stated there how he's going to do business mentorship for the young people. He has clearly stated there how he was going to have a youth advisory council. He has clearly stated there how he intends to put together programs for them to have easy access to credit. He has put there clearly how he intends to address unemployment. He has clearly stated there how he is going to address this sort of social, um, so, so, social political empowerment of young people. So it's a lot of focus. Like I said, it's not tokenism. I, again, believe so much in one track record in projecting for what he could possibly do. And he has done it before. Young people were commissioners on that. Age. Young people run agencies. He uses a lot of young minds. He won't it will run his campaign as currently constituted. Then the women, social inclusion and political, social and political inclusion of women. Again, he has had female deputy governors. Uh, he had a female deputy governor. In Lagos, consistently had female deputy governors. We have had female. I mean, I don't need to again go back to what he has done in Lagos. But on his paper, he has also promised the economic empowerment of women. These are specifics. It is not just tokenism. He has clearly stated what he will do and how he will do it. How he's going to address the issue of domestic violence, which, of course, it's all about women mostly who suffer domestic violence and abuse. Um, how is he going to have them the most disadvantage of them? We also know that the women are the most disadvantaged in our society. Both poverty level and what have you. And what be it, they are also the most hardworking. Truth to be told. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, BKSAN. Uh, we'll, let's just come back to the studios very quickly and take one aspect. I want to begin uh, on this one with uh, Dr. Isa Yoguda. Both yourself uh, and the other uh, guests, uh, that's Sebola and the other guests, uh, have fought shy of providing the details of what you have in the manifesto. But happily, you had a first symposium in November last year, a couple of months ago, where you dealt with, once again, economic blueprint, mm -hmm. infrastructural roadmap, judicial and law reform, uh, uh, security. Mm. I'm just wondering, against the backdrop of part of the explanation by uh, BK Ogala, that namely, look, this is what Tinubu plans in terms of transmission. Mm -hmm. Why is it that the evaluation from the first symposium, issues from the evaluation of the first symposium, are not being used? Mainstream. Are not being used for public enlightenment, voter enlightenment? Uh, and instead, you know, we just keep hearing all these brick brats as if what are the core issues? 
And what you have also explained here today, why are these ones not mainstreamed into uh, the candidate's exactly. communication process? Exactly. Well, uh, maybe it's a question of uh, perception, uh, Kinsley. Um, what uh, we've been able to achieve, at least like uh, Ogada did mention the senior advocate, it's, uh, at least we've been out there, we've been had, we've discussed uh, the content and the import of uh, you know, uh, those uh, topics that were cho chosen. And of course, it is out there because we were the media, the social media, and of course, even uh, at our campaign levels in streets and even local governments, the manifesto has been discussed. And the good news is that when it was, uh, you know, uh, discussed at the national level and the symposium was organized, uh, everybody was excited. What was really uh, the, the issue? What were the issues that were discussed at the symposium? And people got interested. And when they pick them up, as they go out to the field, they discuss them. So I want to assure you that uh, that your fear has been allayed because we are there out in the field. And we know that we are discussing them. We know that we, uh, at our, uh, our uh, rallies, we mention them at you know, our meetings that we meet privately with key stakeholders and uh, some other you know, sex, sex, sex segments of the society. Uh, who we normally invite uh, to uh, you know forums where uh, there are not many, uh, we try as much as possible to communicate this. So maybe um, you might just uh, recommend that maybe uh, uh, the press, maybe the media, should be utilized maybe to uh, you know uh, to continue projecting and uh, spreading the, the the contents and the imports of the manifesto. But I'm assuring you that we are doing our best to do, uh, to communicate. And uh, the earlier Nigerians appreciate the contents of this manifesto so that they know that a government is coming with something at hand to deliver Nigeria. And they can always ask, like I said earlier, it's the first time we can see a manifesto on the ground that makes sense. Something that is doable, something that is implementable. Not, not a vague document, not a theoretical document, but this is a practical. And you can easily hold somebody to uh, his words. As he, uh, this thing. People can hold on the political party and also the candidate for what he has written and what they are implementing. So, I, I, like you said, I mean, you are absolutely correct. Uh, maybe, uh, like I said, uh, you, you may have not known the extent to what we, we are doing. But uh, as far as you are concerned, it's, uh, you are, it's a wake up call for us that uh, we are not being heard. So I'm sure you will improve on that. Oh, and uh, we have some lead time that uh, we'll be able to manage it. Okay, Excellency, thank you. I, in less than a minute that we have, I, I, I do hope Your Excellency and Architect De Bulama will do justice, you know, utilize the time. I'm just going to ask a question from your last symposium. Um, do we have an idea what, how you intend to bridge the gap in the housing sector, which is uh, climbing up to, well, they say more than 28 million, million yeah. and education gap? Maybe well, should, yes. Um, this question actually still you know, requires, you know, uh, giving, um, you know, discussing the details of the uh, manifesto, uh, for which time you know may not be you know available, mm -hmm. but uh, suffice to say uh, that um, I, just as a build up to uh, the question you asked, uh, His Excellency uh, Dr. Yogoda, uh, we've been from the last symposium we've been able to excite um, you know professionals and uh, knowledge workers and thinkers uh, across the board. We've reached out to the NUJ, Nigerian Studio Architects, Nigerian Site Engineers, MBA you know, the Nigerian uh, Medical Association, you know, all these professional groups, uh, they are all, you know, showing interest and uh, they have actually made undertaking to participate in this program. And in any case, we also make input into the presidential campaign. You know, we have the two major campaign organizations, the Presidential Campaign Council, as well as the independent campaign organizations and several other, you know, uh, campaign uh, formations, you know, um, targeting the the discerning elites because we are reaching out to this class of people and uh, the campaign also you know has several town halls engagements with asuaju for instance in all the cities mm. you know okay the, I, I, I you know, our, our we, candidate yes. know, engages we have to stop, stop you. yeah please let ask the question right what have you been what have you been doing or what have you done 
with the outcome of your f first symposium. Okay. Our first symposium, our first symposium mm. was um, one, the fact that we're doing the symposium and people, a uh, deluge of people are coming to be members and also to be uh, participants is an indication that we're doing something. And secondly, we, you know, it's difficult to assess because we, our, we don't have, Aswaju is not in, in government right now. Mm. Until this question will be very uh, uh, cogent when Aswaju comes in. But before then, yeah. we embark on enlightenment. Yes, all right. Uh, I, I, I'd like to um, pause you here because we've uh, spent our time. Uh, Your Excellency Ambassador Hassan Mohammed Hassan, Chairman Symposium Planning okay. Committee, you will agree with me that uh, one hour 40 minutes is gone. Uh, certainly not enough to, you know, uh, take all the issues that you're doing. So we hope that after the uh, symposium, we'll find time to come to discuss the outcome. Uh, Your Excellency Ambassador Hassan, Mohammed Hassan, thank you very much. Uh, architect Waziri <coughs> Bolama, member, BOT APC Professionals Forum and former National Secretary APC, and of course, the, you were a former governorship candidate. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Your Excellency uh, Dr. Isa Yuguda, Chairman, Board of the Trustees, <coughs> APC Professionals Forum, and former Governor of Bauchi State. Thank you. Uh, also joining us via Zoom, uh, Leonard Seik, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Babatunde Ogala, uh, Contact and Mobilization Subcommittee Chairman. Thank you very much for joining us and we wish you a successful outing tomorrow. All right, let's take a look at uh, sports now. Well, I'm looking to